This is my son Ethan and Candace, and we're going to be demonstrating some fish canning today. So we started by setting our net a couple of days ago, and we're here now to do everything else. So I'll start by cleaning the fish, filleting. So Michael, how long have you been doing fish? Mm, I was shown how probably by 10, 12 years old, how to fillet fish. Who and showed you how? My grandfather and my dad. They're professionals. And we just keep doing it because we love to eat. Oh, okay, yeah. Like that way. Mm -hmm. And then just go down just a little bit. Yeah. And then then out. Perfect. And when you're going out, yeah. just kind of push up. Okay. Like so you're following that bone up. Yeah. Maybe you don't want too much of that. Oh, this is awesome. You're doing it in a picture. Are you window first aid? Just in case. I don't know, it's like watch me like <laughs> injure myself. Oh, yep, that's that okay. Good. That's good. Fish off there. Those two bag are that good? Yep, perfect. <laughs> So how much fish will you guys can in a year? Uh, well each batch we do about 12 jars is about 10 fish and we usually do in the fall now and we'll have enough until spring and springtime before the ice goes out we'll set another net and do the process for the summer. And how long does the process take? From start to finish? Yeah. Two days. By the time you set your net, clean all your fish, you can do it all in a day. Like it's, it's a full day. But we we plan so we do the fishing in one day, canning next day. If weather cooperates. I just put the vinegar in the cup just so that it's she easier doesn't and mess. doesn't make a big mess. We just set an assembly line up, and this is our own recipe. We do fairly good squirt of ketchup in each jar. You don't have to do the ketchup. It's just, we like it. And 
And then pickling salt, we do quarter teaspoon per jar. So these would be good for years in your cupboard or pantry or mm -hmm. cold storage. Yeah, yeah, as long as your jars are sealed. You'll hear them seal once we get that process. And then we do a teaspoon of vinegar. Now the vinegar eats the bones. Yeah. That's what that's all about. Because we left the back bones in the... You can leave the belly bones too as long as you can cut them small enough to fit in the jars. So it makes the bones soft? It does, yeah. Okay. You, you don't even, you won't even know there's bones in it. And you're ready for fish. You want to get it as packed tight as you can yes. to get the arrow? Because it does, your fish goes yeah. smaller like it. And you only come up to, to the bottom of your mouth. Yeah. And it, uh, that leaves room for your expansion and your okay. water that will come out of the fish. So yeah, if you, you see how there's a little bit of air in here, mm -hmm. just, just kind of take it all out, pack it in as much as you can, and that's that's what it'll look like when you're done. Like no air bubbles. Mm -hmm. You want to get as much air as possible. Yeah. Out of it. So once your lids are on, don't your lids are just hand tight, not, not tight tight. When you pull them out, we'll show you that later, but that's when you give them the final pour. How many jars fit in each? Depends on the size of your jar. So these are 500 mil jars. We can get it. I believe 10, 10 or 12. 10 or 12. A lot of times, like you ask how long this stuff lasts. And one thing I was gonna say to Candace, it depends on who shows up at her place, because I know if I show up there or they bring this out, it doesn't last very long, because it's very good stuff. So, I enjoy it. I'm glad I can learn how to do it. So is this about as high as you wanna go? Yeah, yeah. just to the bottom of the lip there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just use your two fingers. And once you hear all the yeah, juice of that sound, then that's good. Then you know you're here mostly. Yep. Okay, so this one's good then, right? Yep. Start putting some water in. And then once you put some water, then I'll add the tray so we can stack another, another row of jars. You'd want the water over top of your bottom jars. So just up to the top of them. If you put two layers in there, what would you do? That's what we're doing, we're putting two layers. Okay. What, what are the horror stories with pressure cookers? Well, you can blow this up. This is very easy to blow up, but you have a, these new canners have pressure reliefs. Yeah. So they only go to whatever your gauge is there. I can't see it, but that's it. This here is a 15 pound gauge. So that, that'll start popping at 15 pounds. And what you We're going to keep ours at 11 pounds. Okay. And just our just altitude, if, if you read the manual in, in your whatever it comes with, it'll say for your altitude. So if you check your airport, your altitude's there. So we'll keep ours at 11 pounds. So it'll, it'll never go over 15 pounds. How do you keep it at 11 pounds? You, just you control your heat. Okay. A lot of my career has been in oil field working with steam and steam expands quite rapidly, quite rapidly and quite quickly so the potential for this to be a bomb is pretty good yeah. but we do have some um, preventers on here to blow that out like that the steam will blow out yeah what do you what else do you guys do what did they do in the past in order to prevent this from happening they stood here and washed it <laughs> <laughs> really that's all they did like there was no sealed lids before they just bring the temperature up and let the steam, steam. There's no locking lids. 
So we got this preventer here, it blows out I think at 20 pounds. And this one I think is 18 and this one's 15. This so one you will go past yep. 15. So you have three safety valves on three here, safety which valves. is good. And once the safety valve does blow, let's say it ever exceeds 20 pounds, is this cooker no good anymore? No, you can replace these. Okay. It's every piece on this thing is replaceable, including the seal. You should replace your seal every couple of years, I guess. You'll you'll know like if your seal's no good, like immediately it won't immediately, seal. It won't yeah, steam. It won't the pressure you have water, moisture, yeah. steam pressure coming out, right? So we did turn it down already a little bit just to so we don't go over because we're just on ten pounds right now, right? Yeah. And what do you want it at? Eleven pounds. And that's according that's to our sea level. Sea level, yeah. And that's for 90 minutes. 90 minutes. Our finished product, after everything sits for its two weeks that it has to sit for, after it's done canning, I drain the water out of this one. And I'll go ahead and This is white fish that you have, right? This is white fish. And you can reuse your jars. You just have to get new seals. And we like the miracle whip with it. it tastes like tuna, salmon. And you just mix that all up. And you can eat this on a sandwich. My kids take it to school every day for, for their lunch. So we go through quite a bit in here. All yours. I'll sample it. I'll be the first. I'll be the person to try this stuff. You can add more mayo if you like, however you prefer. <laughs> really good. Really good. Excellent. 